Merrimack TV is committed to our community. From gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of town and school board meetings, to updates on town services and projects, we aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning, I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook. Okay, thanks. I have 6.33 p.m. and this is the October 19, 2020 uh, virtual meeting of the Merrimack Conservation Commission called to order. Um, as is outlined, uh, due to the COVID-19 um, crisis and in, in accordance with Governor Sununu's Executive Order Number 12, uh, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, this commission is authorized to meet electronically. As is outlined in RSA 91-A-2, Roman numeral 3, um, we'll each need to state for the record why we're participating remotely, who's in the room with us, where we are, and whether or not we can hear the proceedings. I'll go ahead and go first. I'm Steve Perkins. I am participating remotely due to the COVID-19 pandemic. I am alone in this room at the office where I work and I can hear the proceedings. Um, Mike Swisher, would you like to go next? Sure, uh, Michael Swisher, I'm participating electronically from home. Attendance in person is not reasonably practical due to COVID-19. I'm alone in the room I'm in and I can hear the proceedings. Thank you, Mike. Gina? Um, I'm Gina Rosati. I am participating electronically from home. Attendance in person is not reasonably practical due to COVID-19. I am alone in the room I am in and I can hear the proceedings. Thank you, Gina. Uh, Mike Boisvert. Hi, I'm Mike Boisvert. I'm participating electronically from home due to COVID-19 and I can hear these proceedings just fine. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Cindy? Cindy Glenn, I'm participating electronically from home. Attendance in person was not reasonably practical due to COVID-19. I am alone in the room and I can hear the proceedings. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Gage? Gage Perry. I'm uh, participating from home due to the COVID-19 restrictions. I'm alone in my room and uh, I can hear the proceedings just fine. Mike Druin. Hi, I'm Mike Druin. I'm participating from my truck because I'm heading home from work uh, and due to COVID-19. And uh, I can, I'm alone and I can hear everyone clearly. Thank you, Mike. And would you please sit in for Pete as a voting member tonight? All right. Thank you. Uh, and Tim? Yeah, this is Tim Tenhave. I am alone in the room, but uh, there are others in my house. I'm participating electronically due to COVID-19 concerns, and I can hear just fine. Thank you very much, Tim. Steve, I'm not yes. sure if you've got the email. Eric Starr will not make it tonight either. Right, thank you. Um, yes, Eric and Pete will not be joining us. Uh, I don't see anyone for public comment. Um, we also have no hearings uh, and no appointments. So it brings us to our first agenda item, uh, statutory business. You know, we have a few people with us. Nick will probably join them.
Nick, that's the uh, Brian Labrie. I'm not seeing him in the waiting room. I added I Karen Labonte. Yeah, I think Trevor is here to speak to this. Okay, so, yep. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Uh, so let me, I'll just go ahead and read uh, the way it was proposed to us. Um, it's a review for recommendation, recommendation to the planning board uh, for the construction of a detached garage. The parcel is located at 660 Daniel Webster Highway in the C2 General Commercial Aquifier Conservation and Wetland Protection Districts. Uh, tax map is 6 e 2 Lot 014, and again, this is Brian Libri, the applicant, uh, BHL Real Estate Holdings, LLC, and owner. Uh, and Trevor is here to speak with us. Trevor, before you begin, will you go ahead and tell us your your full name? Uh, my name is Trevor Raymond Yendo with Meridian Land Services. Thank you very much. Do you want to go ahead and talk to us about your project? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. I appreciate the time. Um, and... We're here to talk about the uh, proposed site plan uh, modification for the, the reference parcel. It's a 22 foot by 28 foot uh, garage for the purpose of vehicle storage during winter months. Um, and we're before the commission as required by the zoning ordinance and looking for a favorable recommendation. Um, as Steve said, uh, it's zoned general commercial and also in the aquifer protection and wellhead protection overlay district. Uh, a little bit of site history. Um, the, prod, uh, the site received its initial site plan approval in 2011, um, and there were a couple uh, ZBA approvals that were subsequent uh, concurrent with that application. Um, in August of this year, the ZBA granted a variance to allow the construction of the proposed garage within five feet of the lot line, um, where the requirement is 20 feet. And I'm actually going to try and share my screen here. Um, can everyone see that? Um, yes, we can see it. Okay. So the proposed garage is the, um, the brown uh, box shown in the middle of the lot, and the red line just represents the setback line, just as a, as a visual. Um, the variance was granted, uh, and the purpose of having the garage in that location was just to facilitate um, a landscaping vehicle with um, a trailer of some kind to come in and make a a 180 degree turn uh, internal to the site. Um, and then subsequently, the applicant was before the planning board on October 6th um, for a request of uh, to waive the full site plan review, which was granted, uh, with the site plan still being subject to all of the provisions from the 2011 approval. Um, as proposed, it meets the requirements outlined in the zoning ordinance regarding the aquifer conservation district. Um, there is not any storage of chemicals, pesticides, uh, herbicides, salt, or uh, fuel uh, on the site. Uh, the only outdoor storage is an existing material storage bin or sand, which is used for de-icing in the winter. Um, and in conclusion, uh, the site meets all the requirements of the ordinance and the development regulations. Um, I want to thank you again for your time. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm happy to do my best to answer them. Thank you, Trevor. I, my, I think my first question is, um, when does this go before the planning board? Do you have a date for that? October 6th. Oh, so it's already been? Yes. Yes. They, I believe, I wasn't at that meeting, but I, from what I understand, they, you know, we have to go before uh, you guys and, uh, but they have already made their their decision to my understanding so um it's yeah okay thank you does anyone have any questions or anyone else have questions for trevor yeah i'm sorry i missed the date you're going before the planning board what was it again so we've already been before the board i wasn't okay. uh the presenter at that meeting but it was okay uh, October 6th. Okay, thank you. So can you talk to us about how you plan to handle the stormwater from the roof of the uh, proposed garage? 
So um, we had looked at the um, the effect that you know the, the additional impervious would have on the site, and with the original approval, which we did, um, the whole site was uh, analyzed as kind of a, a hard packed gravel surface, which it is now. And the, the difference in uh, the amount of runoff that would be generated from the amount of gravel as opposed to the building is negligible. And we've run through the numbers and those basins do contain up to the 100 year storm event with no runoff. Um, so we don't anticipate any issues with that. Okay, so going back to your plan, uh, which I think I believe we all have an electronic copy of as well, it doesn't mm -hmm. show direction of water flow. So where do the, how does the water flow currently on the site? Um, so the site is graded to flow generally just uh, straight back from you know the existing um, the existing structure up front uh, to the I guess I would call it the the northwest back to those basins. Um, I actually have the yeah, the original site plan, which had all of that um, that grading internal. Let's see if I can pull it up for you here real quick. Um, share and so this is um, a close up of the the 2011 approved site plan, and you can see. Uh, on the right is the front of the lot, and then on the left is the rear of the lot, and it all is just kind of sheet flow to the back portion of the lot where those basins are. Yeah, I can see that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I, are you proposing any, and I didn't see it, and I, I expect the answer is no, but uh, any sort of um, landscaping or other type of activities going on related to this? Um, no, there is no additional landscaping proposed. Trevor, the use of this garage is going to be strictly for storage. It's not going to be any maintenance, vehicle maintenance, like yep. that? Yep, Ve uh, vehicle um storage during the winter months and he wanted a, a heated um, area to store the vehicles essentially so so i'm curious if this garage is going on a slab or if there's going to be any um any foundation or dirt moved to the point and the reason that i'm asking is because you were in such close proximity to the single bane land i'm just wondering if any dirt does need to be moved if you have a plan for that um, I do not know the, I haven't seen the architectural plans. Um, so I will look into that and get back to you guys. Um, I would assume it would be a slab on grade, but I don't know that for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I would be curious where the material is going to go if you're going to take anything off site. Yeah, I think if, if there is a foundation, I mean, I don't think it would be you know, too much material. And I, I would assume that um, Brian has a plan to, uh, to deal with. I mean, he probably has space to store it, on, you know, on his site if, if he would need to for the time being. Um, but again, I can, I can look into that and see what, what his, what his plans are. Anyone else, anyone else have questions for Trevor? Okay. Well, thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you for presenting that. We'll go ahead and uh, and communicate our feedback to the planning board. That, that it sounds like that is our only um, item of concern is you know uh, excavated soils, removed soils, and how they're handled and where they go. Yep. Understood. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that brings us to new business. Uh, our first new business item, uh, and I'll let Mike take us through this, is the uh, Scalar Waterfront Subcommittee. Um, I think everyone should have gotten in their packet a brief introduction of all three of the individuals. Mike, do you want to take us through this? Sure. So as requested, um, you have everybody's little 
bio, um, except for Mark Todarski. Um, he just, uh, I asked him three times, he just hasn't uh, gotten a bio in, but most of us are familiar with Mark. Um, you know, I don't, it's not a problem for me. I don't know if that's a problem for any of you. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the bios are, are that, that's what they wrote up. Uh, you had a chance to review them. Um, and that those are currently the people who are interested in serving on the sub the uh, Scalar Waterfront Park Subcommittee. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. None of them are with us tonight, right? All right, correct. I didn't. I didn't even think about inviting them. I, you're right. I could have. I guess I could have asked them to call in. Uh, I. I just. Oh. Yeah. I don't think that's imperative, Gage or Tim. We don't need them here personally, do we? I, I don't believe so. I mean, we. It's always nice to meet these people, but uh, you know, we're. We get. We get. You know, Mike's talk to these people. We've got. A nice letter from them, and certainly someone like Mike Mark Tudashti. I'm, you know, we've met him enough times. I don't, I don't need to, mm -hmm. need to meet him again. Yeah, looks like Mike did a fantastic job of recruiting. They, I've read through these all, all exceptionally talented. Bring some great things to the uh, subcommittee. Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Can I, can I make a motion? <laughs> I was kind of hoping you would. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, All you, Mike. <laughs> so I'd like to make a motion for the Conservation Commission to accept these uh, volunteers, participants to the Scalar Waterfront Park Subcommittee. Do I need to read their names off? Yes. I think we should. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, this includes uh, myself, Michael Boisver, Michael Druin. Mark Todarski, Anita Krieger, David Webb, Tom Martinson. For a term that would go for three years? I guess. Through July 31st, oh, yeah. 2023? Yeah. yeah. So would that be effective like right now from tonight until July 2023? Is that how that works? Normally, we'd like to have some sort of a staggered term so everyone doesn't come due at the same time. Yeah. Now, we've found over time that volunteers come and go, so that staggeredness uh, doesn't usually remain, but we do typically remain staggered in some form. So it's, it's probably worthwhile staggering at least a couple of the seats and letting folks know that it's nothing personal and we appreciate their volunteerism and, and, uh, and, and you know, you know, very much could remain with the committee if they decide to do that. So yeah, a, year, a year from now when they, they have to re-vote them on, we're not going to kick them off. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Mike? The first three that you named, we could go through 2023 and the last three is 2022. That, that sounds good. Well, I, I, I would expect Mike himself to be yearly like we do all, all our others. Yeah, so right? I can, okay, you're right. As the, as the ex officio member, so. Right. Okay. So I can be here. I can be till July, 2021. Is that right? Yeah. So that's just eight months from now. It's yeah. forever. It's forever. <laughs> it feels like the last eight months have been forever. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, I'll second. Anyone feel like we need to have further discussion about this? Okay, because you just need us uh, three that are dates on the, let's see, so Michael, I'm 2021. Mark Todarski is 2022. Um, wanna... let's, let's go Mike Druin. Um, 2022. Well, yeah, 2022 as well, and then we'll go. And then the other one's 2020. Anita, 2023. 
and Tom Martinson, Mark Tisson, 2023. And David Webb. And David Webb, 2023. Okay. Now, did we agree to seven members or did we agree to five members and some of these are alternates? Um, we agreed to seven members. Okay, just curious, I forgot, yes. that's all, okay. And then I, the other question I have is, everyone had a chance to read the charge so that they know what they're getting into? Yes, I sent the charge to everyone, except possibly, I can't remember if I sent it to David Webb or not, but okay. uh, I'll, I'll better to send it twice than not at all. Yes. I'll send it to him again. And we established in there too that quorum is one more than half, right? So in this case, you would need four for a quorum. Because there's six, is that right? One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Any further discussion from anyone? Okay, we'll vote by roll call vote on the yes. Mike Swisher? Yes. Mike Boisvert? Yes. Gina? Yes. Uh, Cindy? Yes. Gage? Yes. And Mike Druin? Yes. Okay. Uh, motion carried seven. Zero, zero. Um, the next item, moving on, the next item in the agenda is the Merrimack uh, Conservation Commission presentation to the Town Council. Nick, are, would you mind throwing that on the screen? While Nick's throwing this up. Are you not able to, Steve? I've got a little bit too much going on here. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the icon where I would do that. Okay, hang on a sec. Thanks, Nick. I'm, I appreciate that. While Nick's putting that on the screen, um, this is just for those who don't know, this is our annual presentation. It's our annual opportunity to present something that town council was originally scheduled for October 26th, but it's now going to be on October 29th and I'll go and present it. Um, you know, I'll say, uh, Cindy made this, or Gina, I'm sorry, Gina made this very simple. She tirelessly scoured all of our um, our uh, meeting minutes for the past 12 months and really kind of gave me some bullets, and that's where I extracted these these high highlights. Um, but basically, it's, it's supposed to be fairly brief. I looked at the one that, uh, that was done last year. Um, it's just a short summary, a short update. Really, what I'm is it on there. There it is. And again, thank you, Gina, for the pictures. Um, yeah, we can go to slide two. Slide two should be pretty self-explanatory. Is that the Merrimack, Gina? I'm sorry. What was that picture? Was that the Merrimack? Yeah, that that's was... that's the um, Thornton's Ferry Landing. Taken Botanic Sklar. I've updated this with everyone's information. If anyone sees something there that's wrong, please call it out. Otherwise, I'm going to assume this is correct. All right. Slide number three is pretty simple. It really didn't, I don't think I adjusted this all from what was presented last year. Um, Slide number four is where we kind of get into the results. I, again, my, my goal with this, and I'll speak to it when we present at the, uh, when I present at the town council meeting, was to call out some of those things that we were most proud of or that we spent the most time on. Um, certainly, if someone feel, feels like I omitted something here that should be discussed, and there's a second slide uh, to this topic, um, please let me know. And as we go through these, as I'm talking about them, I'll, I'll call out that, you know, other little tidbits like the fact that those remaining 69 seedlings were planted on conservation property and so forth. I didn't try to capture it all in words on the slide, but uh, I'll have some supporting notes uh, to 
we'll go with this. Leave this up here for another couple seconds so everyone has a chance to look at it. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Next one is more of our 2020 accomplishments continued. Um, and when the first one on there is, is of course, the Merrimack uh, Chapter 111. I'm missing a one in my 111. Um, and I, uh, Tim will also present on, on that same night that this goes uh, to town council. We're completely full now, aren't we? Right. We have all, we have all members and all alternates. We do. Yeah, we, we may be the only I think, water I, commission that way as well. I think this is the we, first, I think it's the first time that we, we're, we're completely full, right? We have a waiting list too. Yeah. We have two people on a waiting list. <laughs> I'll, make sure, I'll make sure I give a flex to our uh, our recruiting department. <laughs> um, again, I think everyone's had a chance to read through all these. Uh, you, not hurting my feelings, though. If you feel like I've made some gross admission, go ahead and call it out. Uh, Threw in these three pictures. I could, you know, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but it just kind of shows some of the things that we, I will have just reviewed in those previous two slides. Gina, help me out. This, this, um, the Moosewood photo. That's from. We didn't do that this year, right? That's from the previous year. We could not do that. Um, this. Spring, but we did do it last spring. Um, okay. I just I put it in because it just goes to show that our mm -hmm. outreach program. Yeah, I think it's a great photo too. I just couldn't remember if it was uh, if that was pre-COVID or post-COVID when we posted. No, Jeff wasn't doing any any walks this spring. Okay. Um, and on the next slide, it shows our finances, uh, Fund Fifty One, Fund Fifty Three. Gage, I'm hoping you can help me out with. How do I find the number for that bottom portion, that 1920? This is the one that funds uh, the Sauhegan River monitoring, Lake Lake. I, I, I get all that stuff from um, Paul McCallie. Paul McCallie, okay. Yep. He, he, sends, he just sends us the whole, the whole thing. Okay, I'll update that then. The other numbers, the 51, 53, and Horse Hill Nature Preserve Fund, are, those are current. I just hadn't updated that bottom one. All right, I'll I'll get in touch with Paul McCallie, Steve, and ask him. I'm, I guess I I didn't know to ask for that. So, no, can you no shoot me a copy of of your presentation when you're done, just so that I can have this part? Absolutely, I'm going to have to go through and proofread it about four more times before I dare forward. Well, I'll it. I'll give it a proofread for you too. Change <laughs> the spacing on the, the fund fifty three so that numbers at the end. Yes, definitely. I don't know why that happened. Okay. Um, on the next one, and this is where I'm really hoping uh, on our goals for 2020, I'm hoping I collect some feedback here from, from the rest of you. Um, I've tried to outline those things that I thought were most important. A lot of these are, are carryovers from the previous year. Is this goals for 2021? Yep, sorry. Number two has a typo as well, the word continue. Okay. Uh, do we have a USB keyboard though? Because all the batteries are charging all the screws. I know we don't need to prioritize these, but do you want to put some of the bigger ones first? I'd love to. Even just like a shitty USB. You know, things like number five or, you know, that's a, that was, that's yeah. a, Big project that we've been doing a lot of work on, or Tim mm -hmm. doing this present. I'm like going through the presentation for him. Um, there's got to be double A batteries. Hey, Nick, we can hear you. Uh, Hopefully, yeah. I didn't say anything I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> All right, just on you. <laughs> um, okay, I'll move chapter or, or no, number five. Do, some, do we want to? We want to put some of the the things that are we're that we're working, you know, some of the higher priority projects that we're working on trying to get finished up more towards the top. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that we, like you said, this is this mm -hmm. very similar uh, 
very similar report that we give them every year. Yep. So some of the things. No, I love that idea. I'll move number five closer to the top. Um, I'd love to hear what other people. So you're going to get commented on number one because Peter actually brought it up recently at one of our meetings where the town council, I believe, at their um, retreat. The retreat had said that they wanted us to spend more funds on maintenance versus acquisition. Um, so be prepared for that, for, for a comment on that. Um, and basically you might wanna change it to say, continue acquisition of key parcels as, as identified in the town master plan and per hour. Um, we have rules, what do we call that? Our um, bylaws? No, not our bylaws. Sorry, we we, we, had, we had put together some some criteria for parcels that we'd be looking to to get. Oh, acquisition plan. Yeah. Yeah. Our charge or mm -hmm. conservation commission charge. Well, we, no. we we have a way of rating the par parcels. The right. within our mm -hmm. within our. Yeah. But mostly, we're following the master plan and parcels that um, that fit our strategic. Uh, View to grow green space and in particular areas. I, I guess I need to, I need to get a better comment for you. No, that that's helpful. Yeah, if you do have more, I, I almost took that off there altogether because it's not something we've done a whole lot of. Yeah, and, yeah. And I remember what Peter said, but I, it was because it was in our charter to look at certain pieces. That's the only reason I left it on there. Yeah. It, and there's three parcels that are going to come before them in the, within the next year um, that they need to be aware of that are in play. There is the Timasian donation that Mike, uh, Michael Swisher is working on right now. And then there are the two properties that technically moved to us for, for Greater Woods uh, as part of the uh, wetlands activity, but they didn't actually go to the town council for their complete approval yet. So that's something that's still in the, in the ongoing stage. And, and then, and then there's just some ongoing discussions that we have but been doing in, in, in non-public that we really don't want to get into because they're still negotiating. But um, so, so, I mean, you could talk about the three that we know of that are going to happen in the next year and then just say, you know, we're following the master plan and our I'm trying to get the right term. I'll have it in a moment. So it's the Tanasian property and two parcels near that are adjacent to Greater Woods. Yeah, part of the that being donated from the Chestnut Hill uh, subdivision, okay. um, which they should be very aware of that project. So, because they had to, they also had to uh, deal with the. Uh, a donation to support the sewer work that was done and that closed down Babusik Lake Road for a good part of the summer, so. Okay. The nice thing about those acquisitions is they're not something we're actively spending money on. Correct, there are, yeah, those three are all freebies. They're, they're all donations. Yeah, yeah, just so we basically attorney fees for those. Mm -hmm. Who else has feedback? No one? All right, well, someone has. You're saying this the 29th? Uh, the 29th of October, yes. Okay. Yeah, by all means, and I'll, I'll update this after, maybe I won't get it out tonight but I'll, I'll get it back out tomorrow with these revisions. And if, if someone has an epiphany, please uh, share it with me. And uh, I'll, I'll, I can continue to edit this. So what I was trying to say earlier is, is our parcel assessment tool that we use. And it's been in place since 2013. It's not very sophisticated either. It's just a few questions. Sound sophisticated. Yeah, I mean, I can resend a copy if everyone likes to see it, or if you haven't, if some of you haven't seen it. I know I put out copies, oh, a few months back, uh, when we were talking about the Tomasian donation. So, 
Just let me okay. know. I appreciate that, Tim. Um, the last slide, it's the one we're looking at now. It's uh, arguably the most important out of all nine slides here. Uh, that, that's where where we think the town council could help us. This is this isn't something I made. It's not new to the format this year. Uh, Matt had it in there previous years. I, I think Gage, the year before, you had the same. You concluded the same sort of slide, didn't you? Yes. The third bullet, is that supposed to be a conservation officer or office? Oh, officer. I struggled with how to word that. Again, that was something from Pete's feedback that right. Pete told us they, they wanted to hear us to, they, they would have liked, they would like for us to continue to revisit that topic. See if it makes sense. On that topic, I would just remind you too about the meeting we had when Fish and Game came in and did a pretty good job of discouraging us. Um, mm -hmm. So, just to, I'll point out, at least from my perspective, not everybody was gung ho for the idea. <laughs> right. And, and Fish and Game has been responsive every time we've sent them feedback that we're seeing an uptick in people doing the wrong thing at Scalar, they've they've reacted. I don't I don't can't put my finger on a number of citations they've written, but he, he uh, Officer McFadden can McFadden continues to tell us he's been down there. And the price is right. Mm-hmm. We had a, a Merrimack GIS system. No, it never really came to fruition. Okay. It had, it had a lot of traction a couple of years ago. Actually, I think, Tim, you probably were working on that a little bit with, with an NHRPC, right? You're on mute. Sorry. Uh, we, we do have a GIS system. It's certainly much better than it was just a couple of years ago, so... So really it is continue to fund townwide GS, GIS system updates is probably a better way to put it. That's, that's merrimackgis.org. Is that what you were thinking, Gage? Um, we were, no, I, well, I don't, I don't think so. Cause we, a while ago we were talking with, uh, with Kyle and, and DPW about having a system that we could put, we could, add, we could manage layers in. Oh, I see. Yeah, and there was there was going to be a, a lot more, a lot more, you know, interactive abilities other than just parcels. You're, you're right. Yep. Yeah. So how do we want to phrase that then? Yeah. Because yeah. you know, remember, we've got we've still got the layers from from GZA for the water, you know, the, the water level and the and the habitat that is. You know, we have it. <laughs> Nobody else does. Maybe That's... support additional functionality in the GIS tool. Just some phrasing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might be worthwhile a quick conversation with Kyle and find out what if there's words in there, there's keywords in there that he he might want us to use or that would better ID what we were what we're looking for. Yeah, we want him to think we're a partner, not throwing him under the bus. Yes. <laughs> All right, I have that note. Um, anyone else? All right, again, if someone thinks of something, please uh, share it and I'll, I'll incorporate it into this presentation. I think that was it, Nick. I think that was the last one. Good pictures, Gina. Thank you. Is that you? Yeah. Nice. Thanks. All right. So that is all I had for the uh, uh, the annual presentation to town council. Uh, next item under um, new business is the review the 2020 annual report and I kind of talked about it a, a little bit already I know Gina has uh, everyone should have gotten a copy of that 
she even went back through the uh, last 12 months of, of meeting minute notes and, and has put this together. I assume everyone's had a chance to read it. Does anyone have feedback they'd like to share? No? So back when Gage gave this to me, what was it, two years ago? Um, essentially what I do, because they really, this is the, the report that goes into the, um, the annual town booklet that you get when you vote in April. Um, so essentially what I do is I just kind of go through an update. I don't try to reinvent the wheel with this. Um, so I have pretty much just updated what we've done throughout the year, kept it as simple as possible. They really would like me to keep it to one page, but I, I can't make this one page. So the idea is to keep it below two for me. So here it is. If anyone has any changes, let me know. I think the silence means everyone thinks it's fantastic. Thank you, Gina, for running with that. Cool, then I will submit it. Okay, and moving on, number three on the agenda is 2020 membership dues to the uh, NHACC. Uh, what is, I think it's in one of our attachments, I think it was $950 for membership for the year. Is that right? I don't know. Does, it was. It was. Do you know any of the history with this? I mean, how long have we been doing this? Uh, so we've been we've been members since I've been on the commission. So we're we've got to be approaching, you know, twenty years or so. Okay. If you want to, I mean, personally, I mean, I I, I think they do a wonderful job. I I like. You know the support we get from them, so I I don't have any issue paying this. So. Okay. It um, is well represented for anyone that's been to one of the events. Yeah. Um. Well, it I mean about every municipality in the state, it felt like they were all there represented. I'm sure there was some that weren't, but uh, it was a, the annual events a great event to to go and just collaborate and network with other conservation commissions. Well, then they send out a monthly newsletter and um, they have other events that people we're welcome to join. They have a Facebook page. So um, I will say Don, um, who types up our minutes, noticed that there was an, an error on the invoice. It is actually for the 2021 fiscal fees. Um, so I did call New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissioners um, commissions and they corrected and said they would send us a new invoice tomorrow, but I would like to make a motion to approve the invoice from the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions for the 2021 membership dues in the amount of $950 and allow the town finance department to pay the bill within a reasonable time. And when meeting cash flow ability source of funding is the town budget. Second. Okay, who seconded? That was me, Gina. Gage, thank you. Anyone like further discussion on this? No? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. I'm a yes. Uh, Mike Swisher? Yes. Gina? Yes. Uh, Mike Waver? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Gage? Yes. And Mike Druin. Yes. Okay, that motion passes uh, seven zero zero. Uh, next, we move on to old business. Uh, the first item up is Wildcat Falls Conservation Area. Uh, vote to reopen Wildcat Falls. Um, I guess the issue here is do we, do we move now to go ahead and call it open on our town website? Merrimack Outdoors. If anyone, why don't we start with if anyone does not feel like we should, why don't, we, why don't you go, go ahead and tell us why. Okay, so I'm gonna make a motion on that. 
I don't even think we need to. That's our decision. I guess we could. All right. You yeah, I, just, I, I was just going to say, I didn't want to move forward with updates to the website to put everything back the way it was, you know, in March without the whole commission having visibility as to what was going on and approving of that action. So as long as you're all here nodding your heads up and down that you want us to put it back the way it was and, re and, and put all the information back that I'm happy to move forward with that level of consensus, not needing a vote. So I'm yes. And, it looks unanimous. I have a question though. Would it yes, um, would it be logical to include some of the latest information about the resident parking seasonally for people who look to the website just for general info, or is that a, a little premature? Is there, there are going to be limitations to visitor numbers, primarily for people who come from out of area. They're going to look to the website, many of them at least. Do we know where those limitations are going to be posted? How can people get to them? The signs are going up now, actually, speaking to residents only parking from, uh, I believe, April 15th to September 15th. They already started putting the signs up. I thought they were going to wait. I do too, but I saw a post this weekend because I took a drive by on Sunday just to see how well things were going. And I saw posts all over the streets and I saw at least one sign as you start to head down Courier Road. Okay. So, I shall have to take a ride. I, I don't. I think Mike's got a good idea that maybe our write-up could include some. I don't want to say a warning, but a FYI that parking is restricted and enforced type of thing. Maybe get there early in the summer months if you expect to visit the falls. All right. Any right. other feedback? Okay, move on. The next item is Wildcat Falls um, annual update from the subcommittee. Gina, do you want to facilitate that? Yes, absolutely. So we have Karen Levante, who is our um, Wildcat Falls Conservation Area Chair, is here to give us feedback. And Liz Petrides is also here. And our newest member, Isla, is here. Um, I believe she's here. And I did not see if Andrew was here. Andrew Duane, are you here? Let's see. I don't see Andrew. I see our newest member though. Hi, Isla. Hi, Isla. Hi, Karen. Hello, Gina. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for providing this space for us to come together and join your meeting this evening. My name is Karen Labonte, 25 Sand Hill Drive, Merrimack, New Hampshire. I'm alone in this room. I can clearly hear can you guys hear me? Yes. So I'm just here to present um, the um, <clears throat> it's an annual update for you folks. Um, I'm sorry I don't have anything that I handed in. I didn't have a copy of this sent, but I will do that for you. Um, um, it's been just a crazy time for everybody in our own little worlds. We're dealing with so many different things. So just I wanted to just make this real quick. Um, our first and last official meeting this year was on January 7th, 2020. Um, in discussion was a full moon sh snowshoe walk, uh, the situation with the padlocks for the gate entrance and a proposed date for Wildcat Falls subcommittee meetings for 2020. Um, there was also an issue around snow plowing um, berms that were blocking the North Loop Trail. So in, Gina, wanted to thank you so much for um, taking the time and effort to get the padlock situation resolved. That is done. Um, in July, there were two trail cleanup events. Um, members of the litter crew had gone out unbeknownst to us. Um, they went out and did a bang up job in cleaning up the falls area. Um, uh, another group of us, um, which were involved, um, the Merrimack Conservation Commission members, Wildcat Falls subcommittee members, Michael Laverne Memorial Foundation uh, members. And there was also neighbors um, from the Courier Road um, residents that came and helped us out. And we wanted to give a huge thanks to everybody for doing so. Um, the parking lot has been resurfaced with new painted parking spaces for designated parking and no parking painted on the surface along the wooded side of the parking lot. As of yesterday, while leaving the property, 
Liz and I noticed that folks are still parking along the wooded portion of the parking lot, which remains an issue regarding safe and rapid access to the property for emergency vehicles. Hopefully, as we continue to work with the Department of Public Works, they will come up with a more permanent solution to eliminate that problem. Um, Gina and I met with Connor from Eversource Energy on October 2nd to discuss removal of potential hazardous tree fall on the power line portion of the property. They successfully removed those trees and placed them alongside of the clearing to naturally break down and provide shelter for wildlife. Um, there are many new and old agenda items that have been placed on hold from the Wildcat Falls Subcommittee. And we hope in moving forward, getting back to business as usual, at some point in time, we can go ahead and continue our mission as stewards in protecting that property, keeping it up and accessible and available to any and all those who wish to enjoy it. Um, yep, and, and coming this Saturday, there will be a, a walk led by me to the falls. So um, folks are um, in closing for this season. That's about the last event that we do have so far. So um, we're here 100% just trying to do our part. And hopefully uh, we just wanted to thank you for your support. It's been a really tough um, year for everybody. And um, now that it's opened, I hope that we can stay that way um, with the ordinances that are set, the changes that are you know, provided by the town to provide the signage. I didn't see that. I've been out there just yesterday, but I didn't see the signs along the courier road for resident parking only. Um, so yeah, so that's it for me. Um, thank Karen, you. That, thank you, Karen. That was a great update. Thanks for all your, uh, your tireless work down there. Um, Gina, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, the only thing that I would say is, especially when Chapter 111 um, is is passed and everything, um, I I think if we can get our hands on some signs that say that are that are bigger to put them down more closer to Dog Beach and um, just for no alcohol, no glass, um, we just want to make some rem reminders down there, no fires, just to make sure that that we're covered for all the entrances because people are coming in from the state land and we wanna make sure that we're very, very clear on where we have our, our signs because we did have a problem with alcohol down there during the summer. Yeah. And if I could, I could just um, speak to, there's a long item list of things regarding the whole safe access to the property uh, through the town council, working with the police department, you folks um, really in support of, of finding a medium or finding a way to make this work for everyone um, safely. Um, I just literally, moving forward, I really want to, whatever we can do in, in our part to help support gathering data or information. And I really would look to you folks, if in the event that in the future, we're looking at having a bridge built onto that property from the lower ball fields over on West Chamberlain, that would be great. So just, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Anyone else want to make any questions for Karen? Not a question, but just a comment. And I know the subcommittee knows this, that you haven't been really able to meet or allowed to meet. And it's, it's, it's the rules that we're playing by. It's not the rules we've set. So. Absolutely. I appreciate that, Tim. Thank yeah. you. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank okay. you for that great report. And I just, I just want to give a shout out to the subcommittee members who have done such a terrific job. So Karen and Liz and Andrew, you've done a terrific job. I know this has been a brutal year at Wildcat um, and you guys did a terrific job through yeah. all of it. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks Liz for, <laughs> for everything too. Yeah. Okay, uh, moving on. The next item of uh, old business is the scout update. Gina, again, I guess you're probably the best person to give us this update. Yeah, um, so 
I'm probably not the best person to give Daniel's update. I know that he did go before the town council um, and got his approval there, but I'm not exactly sure where, what his status is. I do know that Sarah Hardy um, will be going before the town council. Um, she was supposed to go on Thursday, but as you pointed out, the town council meeting has been postponed to October 29th. So she will be there on October 29th. Her project is to put selfie stands up um, on certain properties. So she will be there to present that. Um, I'm not sure, do we have an update um, on when Daniel Bardis is, is gonna be doing his, his bridge? Uh, yeah, I have a little bit of information, not too much, but I received an update a couple days ago that he in fact finished on Saturday. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And I took a walk down there today um, with my son and took a look at it and the handiwork is impressive. So I want to thank That's Daniel. Right. Under budget and ahead of schedule is always a good way to work on projects. Excellent. Um, okay. Can you describe so, where it is, Michael? Yeah, it's right by the Watonic uh, parking area. So yep. if you just descend from there to the loop trail and then um, make your way this would be west on the loop trail. Uh, you'll walk right over it. It's um, practically within sight distance, but just beyond. Okay. Great. Thank so, you. so how how you said he was under budget because his budget was originally like nine hundred and fifty dollars, and and we approved five hundred. So yeah, ev evidently, uh, whether it was Home Depot or Lowe's, I can't recall, but I, I guess he was able to get them to donate the materials as well. All of it? Yeah, I, I didn't get any details. Um, just an update from, from PDAM. And, and he had said that um, in addition to finishing ahead of time, he had scheduled uh, all weekend to do it. And I think he took a little bit on Friday, but it was a bit of a washout, if you recall. So I'm not sure how much he got done on Friday. And then just all hands on deck Saturday and busted it out. All right. OK. Um... Okay, that's good. The other thing is um, Mike Druin and I spoke and uh, Mike has very graciously accepted me passing the torch of being the, the scout liaison to Mike Druin. So say hello to your new scout liaison. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. So Thanks, he, Mike. Can, he will be doing the next update, but I will be there. Um, on Thursday the 29th with Sarah when she does her presentation just to, to you know finish up with her in case she has any questions since I've been working with her. Fabulous. Well thank you Gina. Thank you Mike. Um, next item number four is the Wasserman Conservation Area uh, annual LSIP walk. This is really just a, mind, a reminder that um, that event is Sunday November 1st. Uh, we'll meet in the resident lot at 9 a.m. Uh, dress warm if you plan to come. Uh, blazed orange is in fashion this time of year. Uh, it'll be November. Um, uh, what other notes? Uh, this is a posted meeting, so we don't need to limit the number of us. If anyone who wants to come, please come. We'll be doing minutes uh, in some form for that anyhow. Daylight savings time is November 1st, right? Oh, yes. So this will feel like 10 a.m. <laughs> um, good call out. Actually, it will feel like 8 a.m. <laughs> Isn't Is it 9 to 11? You fall back. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Oh, you're right. We fall. fall back. Okay. Oh, good. So it will feel like 10. Yay. Um, so so we, we do need to pick a, a scribe or someone who's going to uh, put the report together. I'm glad because you mentioned that, Tim. Um, I did speak with Eric about this, and I, I, I wouldn't do it justice to try to convey his level of enthusiasm of taking this over from you, uh, becoming your apprentice for this walk, and just running with it after that. Uh, and I think he's, uh, it sounds like he, he was extremely comfortable with what needed to be done and uh, his ability to do that. So, uh, All right. yeah, so, sorry so I didn't do that. Okay, I'll connect with him, but it turns out I have a, a family activity that, that morning, so I can only be there to send you on your way if I need to be there at all. So 
uh, but I'll, I'll connect with him because basically for the walk, we need someone to take pictures and maybe that could be a joint affair. Many of you could do that. And we need someone to make sure that we accurately get it, get the track on a G GPS system so we can put that together into the report. So, and I can certainly walk Eric through how to generate all that stuff, but someone needs to grab the, uh, um, you know, a GPS track of the entire walk, so. Okay, let me. Uh... Tim, I'm sure you have the for former tracks that you've paid. Is that something you can send to him? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now that I know who the person is, I will, uh, I'll start. Because uh... we've done a pretty good job in the past trying to pick new routes going through there. Um, yeah. We've covered a lot of it now, but it might be worthwhile to try to see if we can find some spots we haven't been to yet. Yeah, it, the goal is to get a good view of the entire property or as much as possible. So we've been mostly doing perimeter kind of walks and then crisscrossing a little bit here and there. And going at that time of year, you can see pretty well into the forest because most of the leaves have already come down at that point. So um, so that, that's just the key is to make sure you cover as, as much of the property as you can, so. So I got to say, because we did during the Merrimack hike um, group, we did cover Wasserman and you guys never took me to see Willie's Jeep. Well, that's not on Wasserman, actually. Really? That, that's the extension properties that we bought afterwards. I didn't know that. Also, yeah. there's like a, a, um, a seesaw for the bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get that's into that. <laughs> what? Okay. Don't I, get into that. Okay. Nope. Muting now. <laughs> All right, number uh, number five on our agenda under our old business is the uh, 50th annual NH NHACC conference. Uh, this again is a virtual conference. It's gonna be held on Saturday, November 7th uh, from eight to 8 a.m. till noon. Any commissioners who wanna participate in this uh, can participate in this. Uh, the, the town will fund it. Um, it's a great event. Uh, but really, I guess the important thing to convey here is that if you do intend to participate, please let Sharon know that and register by uh, Friday, October 23rd. She's asked that when you register, select that you will pay by check. That check won't come from you. That will come from uh, community development. Uh, but we need to give her a little turnaround time. You know, let her know that you've registered and um, we get a discount because we are NHACC members and she'll put anyone who wants to attend together on one payment or one check. Um, anything else someone feels like should be talked about with regard to the 50th annual conference? Okay. That takes us to old business. Um, we do not have any additional subcommittee updates. I have one update. Okay. So uh, I've been back and forth with uh, Beaver Solutions. There's some question as to whether we should or can put a, uh, a water leveling device in the backside of that property over off of uh, um, where we talked about last time. Uh, I can't come up with the name of the street. Brookside, Brookside Drive. Thank you. <laughs> that apparently is the uh, one of the, the is, quite a large watershed coming to that area. So we have some more uh, discussion, Mike and I, on, on whether we can put something there. So that, that's not a dead subject, but it's it's not going forward yet either. So just an FYI. Okay, thank you. I have uh, an update with, uh, I guess, Jim knows about this too. And you might, Steve, that more rocks were delivered to the Scalar site. Um, I haven't checked it out yet. They were just delivered uh, a couple of days ago, I think. And so I'll, I'll uh, get in contact with Mark Todarski and at some point in the future, uh, we'll try to have the ones moved that, that were moved aside, moved back and some of the new rocks to aid in those barriers. That's fantastic. Mike, have you seen them? Are they massive? I haven't seen them, but maybe Tim, have you seen them? From their old site? Yeah, so I have seen them. Um, massive, I'm not sure. They're this big, can you tell on your screen? <laughs> <laughs> That's the size of the one behind you. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. It's like that one right there. <laughs> That's the size we need. Excellent. <laughs> no, but in all honesty, they're probably about a quarter of that size and then smaller. So. Well, that's fantastic. Great news. Thank you for that, Mike. Anyone else? All right. Um, I guess we're, we can move on S to... Uh, yeah. Steve, did um, did you get anywhere or get any answers about the possibility of subcommittees being able to meet again? I didn't, Mike, and I'm glad you asked that. Um, I did reach out and ask for, uh, for additional guidance on that. I think my timing might have been bad. I, I, I did it when I think some key members of... Uh, Community development. We're on vacation, so I will. Uh, I have a note here uh, to circle back and see if we can get more clarification. It's probably not a, an easy question for the town to answer, but uh, I'll ask it again anyway. All right. Thank you. So, um, does that mean subcommittees can't meet? Period. Even outside or anywhere. <laughs> This is the way I asked Mike. I said, we have some pretty small subcommittees that are, are hardy and can certainly do an outdoor meeting spread out by six feet, maybe even more. And um, they're eager to get back and have some of these subcommittee meetings. I, I just simply didn't get an answer. I didn't get a, a yes, that's okay or, or, or anything. So let me ask it again uh, with greater passion and I'll, I will let you know as soon as I find out. Um, okay, that takes us to the presentation of the minutes. Everyone should have got a copy of their of the minutes in their packet. I will make a motion to approve the Merrimack Conservation Commission minute meeting meet, meeting minutes for September twenty first, twenty twenty, with changes as follows. Second. Who second? I did too. Second. Does anyone want to go? Yeah, you. <laughs> You're unmuted. Why don't you? Why don't right. you be in? I will go. Okay. I have on page three, line 13, add a P, so it's stripping instead of striping. Um, I have on page five, line 44. Um, Councillor Albert commented when the condos, take the comma out of there, we're going in, put the comma after in. Let's see. No, sorry, Gina? Yeah. Can you go back to your first change? Yes, should it be striping? So what, where was it again? It was page three. So it's page three, line 13. Um, they came up with the idea of stripping the building inside and out, not striping the building. Did they want to stripe the building? No, I just wanted to make sure I, I, I got it. That's all, you're, you're okay. good, thank you. Okie doke. Okay, so now we are on page six, line 43, um, or identifying what will be, put an NE on do. So it will be what will be done to control velocities. On page, let's see. Um, this probably doesn't need to be done, but on page 12, line six, I would just put an E in front of bikes. So it's class one e-bikes. All right, I ended up going back because I my notes differed from these. So I did go back and I watched the video and on page 14, Line 34, that was actually Gage Perry that seconded that, not Councillor Albert. And on page 16, 
line 32. That was actually Chair Perkins that seconded, not Commissioner Boivier. And that is that. Who else has something? I only had that striping stripping one, so you, you beat me in spades. <laughs> Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and approve those by roll call vote. I vote yes. Uh, Mike Swisher? Yes. Uh, Gina? Yes. Mike Boivere? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Gage? Yes. And Mike Druin? Yes. Fantastic. Motion passes seven to zero. All right, bear with me. All right. Presentation of the minutes. Uh, I do not see anyone in the waiting room, so there are no more public comments. Um, next, I guess the only item we have left is commissioner comments. Uh, Mike Swisher, do you have anything? Um, nope. Somebody already mentioned where your hunter orange. That's all I would have said. Gina? I'm all set. Mike? Uh, yeah. Um, do we know, uh, Gage, remember I sent you an email about uh, trail markers on the, in Greater oh, Woods? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, went, I, I have a whole bunch of stuff out in the shed. I forgot to go. I got halfway out there and got sidetracked. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you have some. I, well, I, I have some markers. I just don't know how much of what. So, yeah, so, some, well, red and blue. Right, I have to go out and look and see what's there. Okay, because uh, I don't mind. Uh, my wife and I can go out some November day, just spend all day out there and fill in the gaps. Yep. I just, I've got to get out to my shed with, and on track and stay on track. That's the problem. Okay, so you'll get in, you'll get in touch with me? Yes. All right, I'll, I'll send you a reminder in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Actually, I do have something. Yes. Since Gage is up there chatting away. Um, what's, where do we stand on maps? I sent all that information to you, no? But that was like post or pre-COVID. Okay, I'll look for it then. Um, yeah, yeah, let, obviously let me know. And, and okay. I'll, okay. I hope I did. Okay, if, if you didn't, I'll figure it out. Well, Thanks. yeah. Just if you don't find it right away, let me know, and I can I can send you I can send the contact info. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Cindy. I don't have anything. Uh, Gage, anything? Um, yeah, I want to back up on what Michael was talking about, Hunter Orange. Uh, obviously, people if they don't want to wear it, that's fine. But please put it on your dogs. I've seen so many animals running around the woods, completely, you know, naked. I guess is the best way to put it. But those pups need need the hunter orange on them. Great point. Thank you, Gage. Uh, Mike Druin. Um, I'm a bit concerned that the snow is going to start falling before we can work on Sklar. Uh, so if we could get an answer uh, soon, that would be great. That's a uh, that's a request I will send tonight. Um, I'll let you know as soon as I hear something back. I'll, maybe I can, I'll call and follow up again tomorrow if I don't hear anything by noon or so. Um, Tim? Yeah, just a quick comment on, on, on Mike Druin's comment. Just realize as a subcommittee, if you're going to be making changes out there, they do need to come before the commission. So, um, you know, just, you know, big changes, you know, little tidy ups and things like that or, or things to make things safer. Absolutely not an issue for most of us, but but uh, but if you're planning on new trails and stuff like that, we really should talk about them. So, um, so I'm, I'm I got a few things for you, Steve. Uh, so one of them is is uh, when my term completes at the end of June, 
I am not intending to uh, ask to stay on the commission. I'm going to take a break for a little while. I have some other activities going on. And, and since we do have people waiting in the wings, and I believe uh, we have a very capable crew here, uh, I'm, I'm, that's my intent at this point. So with that said, uh, website maintenance, uh, I've kind of been ignoring it, hoping someone was going to jump up and down and say, hey, I want to take over the website. That hasn't happened. So now, now that we're getting into the, the remaining seven months of my term, it would be good for someone to think about whether or not they have skills like that and would like to do it. If you can use Word, you can update the website. It's not that hard. Uh, one project you could do that I could help you with that would be really informative to whoever takes this over would be the SCLAR uh, subcommittee webpage because that has to be created now that we have a SCLAR subcommittee. So, uh, but in general, it would be good for someone to, to start learning the ropes. There are helpful videos that Wendy created years ago. It's for a slightly older version of the current software, but all the videos are still pertinent. Um, that's certainly available. Um, so, so that's just something to keep in mind and start thinking about uh, that. I will certainly take care of the Wildcat Falls piece because since I'm the one who took it all apart, I should put it all back together again. And, uh, and, and I, I am getting a little smarter in my old age. I kept notes, so I know what to do. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but also with that said, something Gina and I have discussed a little bit about is, is, you know, like today, we had a project and we went through and reviewed a project and looked at certain things. And um, you can see what Gage and I have hit on in the past on things. And some of you are starting to, to carry that torch and doing all that. But we probably should set, a, set aside time if you think it's helpful uh, as part of the later part of our meetings. Uh, where I and or Gage or others can say, hey, what did we look at with those plans? What do we think the commission should be commenting on? And how do we you know, translate that knowledge and experience to our newer members? So, um, so that's just something to think about. But if we, have a, you know, if we have an agenda like we have tonight where we're done reasonably early, we could probably take 10 or 15 minutes and touch on things that, that we would normally look at in plans, things that we might not even bring up because we've looked at it and said, yeah, it's not a problem. We probably should be doing that uh, more proactively now in front of all the commissioners so they can be aware of those kinds of things that we look for. So uh, kind of turn every meeting and every project that comes before us into a, a learning opportunity versus trying to set aside uh, uh, you know, time in a meeting and then go through a whole bunch of plans and say, what did you look at? I think, I think if it's a plan we just saw that same evening, it's very fresh in everyone's mind. So, uh, but you might have noticed today some of the questions I asked. Uh, they were very deliberate, not only to get the answer that I was looking for, but also to signify those are some of the things that we should be looking at. You know, stormwater, how's it being treated, where is it flowing, all that kind of stuff. You know, we all know about um, landscaping and stuff like that. You know, snow removal, but there's probably some more subtle things that will come out as different projects come before us. So. So if you could set aside 10 minutes in the meeting, I don't want to do it while the people there are in front of us, simply because those people are engineers, they get paid by the hour, and, and those clients of theirs would be paying for them to sit for us to have a training session for the rest of the commission versus um, providing value for their clients. So, but I mean, it may spawn some new conversations or questions too. So, but I think in general, we probably want to do it later in the meeting or something, so. That's a great idea, Tim. I've got the note. I'll definitely, uh, I'll, yeah. when we see the draft agenda for the next meeting, I'll see if that's something we can tie in at the end. Okay. And there, there was one more thing, but it has escaped me. So you all get the benefit of me forgetting. <laughs> Justin, you said Questions you for you. Go ahead. Someone say something else? No, I said yeah. he was taking notes. <laughs> Okay. I have two questions. Yes, what are your questions? For Tim. Um, so my first question, Tim, is what would, do you think it would be helpful to kind of create a, um, almost like a conservation commission handbook that discusses the things that we're doing and goes into a little bit more detail about them? Like, you know, when we get to looking at plans, you know, 
kind of go through so that you can see these are the things that we look for. We look for, you know, straw versus hay. We look for, um, you know, low phosphorus, no, um, no nitrogen. But to go through and, and kind of keep track of the things that we look for so that we can refer back to it. And so we're not reinventing the wheel all the time. And oh, just so that when a new person comes in, we kind of say, okay, you know, let's start with read this. I think that's a great idea. Uh, okay, well, I can spearhead that and I can work with you and, and you know, and, and some of the, um, you know, Gage has been here for a while and, and Mike and Cindy have been here for a while and get something put together. Um, maybe even, you know, go back to, you know, see if Matt has anything he would like to add to it. Um, my, uh, what was my, see now I'm, I'm losing my track of mine too. Um, you know, I bet if the right, if one of the participants asked that sort of question at the uh, NHACC meeting too, mm -hmm. there may already be a document in existence, the right well, person for asked for one. So they used to run a 101 class, you know, Conservation Commissioner 101, where you could learn about, you know, what it's like to be and what your role is to be a Conservation Commissioner. And they also had a handbook that they provided everybody, which is a great source of material. I, know I would I have, have it then. I, I know I have an older version, but that would be something that um, you might want to take a look at okay. and, and even ask um, the director of the NHACCF, is it Barbara, I believe, ask her if she has it electronically. Okay. Um, or maybe we just take it apart and scan it. So okay, all right. My other question too, I just thought of it. Um, so updating the website, doing grants, is that something that you have to be a, a conservation commissioner to do, or could we enlist in some some volunteers who are not necessarily commissioners, but would like to offer some volunteer help and and take over these things for us? Yeah, yeah, I see no reason why you couldn't do that. So, I mean, we could even pay pay people to do that kind of work too, as we've done in the past, mm -hmm. at least for the website. So, okay. But yeah, I, I think what, if you were going to have a volunteer, you just want to have a, a person on the commission who's responsible for for oversight. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we had also. I'm trying to remember who I discussed it with. We talked about. Um, I don't know how it would work. I think. It, I think I was talking to, to Mike Drew about the scouts um, doing some work on a regular basis, but I was thinking that it probably would be hard to do because the scouts are coming in and out. But anyway, okay, that's a good, a good thing. I mean, maybe we, we look and we see if there are people out there that have some, you know, some web experience that they would want to take this on. Although that might be a little tricky because you do need to know the, um, you do need to know more about the Conservation Commission. I would think the grants would be a little bit easier to have somebody who has grant writing experience come in, do some grant writing for us. So, okay, well, stuff to think about. Thanks, Gina. Um, I don't have any additional comments. Does anyone feel inclined to make a final motion? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, by roll call vote, Mike Swisher. Yes. Gina. Gina. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Mike Boisvert. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Gage. Yes. Mike Druin. Yes. And I am also a yes, so that motion carries seven to zero to zero. Thank you all for uh, thank you all for your participation, and have a great evening. Merrimack TV is committed to our community, from gavel to gavel coverage of town and school board meetings to updates on town services and projects. We aim to keep you connected. Uh, good morning. I'm Kyle Fox, Public Works Director for the Town of Merrimack. Hi, I'm Diane Trippett. I'm the Town Clerk Tax Collector for the Town of Merrimack. I'm Captain Matt Tarleton with the Merrimack New Hampshire Police Department. And keep the public informed of every motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And many moments, so you can be confident that we're here for you. Thanks for watching. Stay connected. Follow Merrimack TV on Facebook.